I love that my crafty friend is Ashley Pfeiffer, the maker behind Stamp Day F. Uh, if this is your first time here, welcome. This is, I'm, I'm doing some software testing, uh, both for live streaming and recording my videos, and usually I wouldn't have my AirPods in, but uh, I don't have a microphone yet, not one that I'm happy with, so that's arriving on Wednesday, which... So my next live streams and videos will have a professional microphone. But I, I wanted to share two adorable little boxes with you this week. And I know this video is a little bit late and let me tell you why. Because last night I was recording it, it took me like well over an hour. Well, not well over an hour, it's like an hour and five minutes. Uh, but it took over an hour. And I went to edit and it was all wonky. I had to uninstall my video editing software. And even then, it just wasn't good. So fingers crossed that this one is good because I really can't wait to show you these boxes. They're two different sizes and we are using the color and contour bundle today. We're also using, um, when I made these, um... When I made my samples, this was actually the recording that didn't work last night, I used the Pansy Petals Suite. We are actually going to use some different DSP today because I'm kind of running out of this one. I did some swaps that are set to arrive this week and you will see those as soon as they arrive. Well, maybe not as soon as, but shortly thereafter. And I used Pansy Petals, I think is the name of the bundle. There's a Pansy Petals, Pansy Patch all new names to get accustomed to. Anyways, I had used up so much my DSP for those swap cards that I don't have much left. I'm on fumes. And if you're watching this when it goes live, May the 4th is the new annual catalog, not pre-order, regular orders. Yay! So there's no limits. We can get whatever we want. Now I know there are a couple of items that are already on back order, which just blows my mind. However, uh, there are a few items that are already on low inventory too. So if there's something you're wanting, do not hesitate. So without further ado, let's get our craft on. The only thing that I'm actually using from this bundle are the dies because they are fantastic. Actually, I lied. Uh, let me show you two projects first. So I don't usually show my samples for this, but each month the Stamping Society creates with a theme and this month our theme is favorite floral bundle that is carrying over and I chose the in bloom bundle and this is my blog hop card so lots of pierced detail on there and you would think that that was like an hour worth of die cutting but it's really not there are so many dies in that set that this was maybe two or three runs through my stamping cut and emboss machine so super easy super fun this is the new tailor-made tags die set and then this is the one for the tutorial so to get the tutorial you can join my team team members get this and the sweet stamping connection which I'm going to show you next they get that for free every month if you live in Canada and you would like to join my team you can get that for free too you can join my growing team we have monthly meetings we have creative challenges we have so much fun uh, but this is in the tutorial, so you can get that by being a team member. You can purchase it outright for $9.25 Canadian, or you can shop with me for, I think it's a $33 order, but if you make it $35, you will get both that and the Sweet Stampin' Connection tutorials as my thank yous. I'm not going to bother with that because it takes a minute. And the other one is the Sweet Stampin' Connection, and I'm so blessed to be a part of this because it's actually... a U.S. based design team and I'm the only Canuck. So each month we again have a theme and this month was in color, the new in color, I almost want to say club, the incoming in colors and I had fresh freesia. So I again used the color and contour bundle. This is quickly becoming a favorite and I used every dye for the borders. You see that there's even one in vellum there which is a little hard to see but awesome, right? So Stamping Society, it's a video and written tutorial with Sweet Stamping Connection. It is a written tutorial with photos. So this one is just the cutest little box and you'll notice I use that largest die as the box itself, the ribbon threads through. I'm going to untie this and I'll never be able to get it in a nice bow again. 
but you can see I used a couple of the frames and then I've just got a couple of little treats with some of that gingham paper in there. And that is from that Pansy Petals DSP as well. So you can see why I'm running on fumes. But if you wanna get your hands on either one of these tutorials, you can join my team or you can purchase, make a purchase with me in my online store. There's always a host code. Uh, there's a gift with purchase if you use my host code, but you have to place a $60 order for that one before taxes and shipping. So if you have any questions, you can just reach out and ask. That being said, I'm so sorry. I know I said we were going to get to the crafting, but I have one more thing I want to show you. So there are, it's a very busy time with Stampin' Up. So we have a few promotions going on. So this one is one of my own promotions. So my product shares. You can purchase one, two, or three, uh, the designer series paper, the ribbon share, and or the embellishment share. Now, if you purchase all three, you are going to get an invitation to my VIP party. I am hosting that with three of my crafting besties, and it is going to be June 13th. It's going to be so much fun. You can purchase these shares anytime between now and let's say the third week of May and you will get access to this party. Okay, so the next is, so within Color Club, you are signing up for five straight months. Each month you will get everything you see there in that color. So let's say, for example, in May, your color is Fresh Freesia. You're going to get a package, a full package of the cardstock, the classic Stampin' Pad, the Stampin' Refill, the Stampin' Blends Combo Pack, the Stampin' Write Marker, and a full roll of the ribbon. Now, this is the first time, I think, that we've had Stampin' Blends for all five in color, so we are all very excited about that. Uh, we also have a joining offer in May, starting tomorrow, starting May 4th to the 31st. If you join, whether it be in the U.S. or Canada, if it's in Canada and you want to join with me, I would be so, so honored. Uh, but in Canada, you are spending $135 and you're choosing $206 of product. It's amazing. Usually you're choosing 165 so this is incredible so all through May almost in June and then like I mentioned we've got my gift with purchase each month there is a new gift so this month is the 2123 in color jewels okay so hopefully that was hopefully that was fast enough for you but let me finally get to crafting we're like 10 minutes in <laughs> Okay, so let's make our two boxes. So the first one, I know I'm so sorry, I keep saying so. The first one is this adorable little dotted scalloped lid. So cute, right? Got a bunch of Hershey's Kisses in there. And then this one has, it's that biggest die. And it gets a little funky around the edges, so I tried to put the edges along the side. On my first sample, I tried to have it where I cut that part away, but then there were parts that didn't have any scallops, and it just looked weird. So this one will fit kisses as well, but it will fit some deeper items or layered items as well. So let me, once and for all, get on with it, right? Okay, and it is a snug fit, and I'm going to show you the secret to that. So let's start with the smallest one. It doesn't matter how much desk I have, it's just never enough. So I'm going to my stamp and cut and emboss machine right here. And I'm using the hand pen DSP. Like I said, I was running out. It would look super cute with those dots, wouldn't it? Hmm. Should we do the dots or should we do that? You know what? We're going to go for it. We're going to do the polka dots. So there is really nothing special to doing the lids. Just need to see how much. Because this was so yesterday. I don't remember what I did. Okay, so this is a half an inch. And I just kind of dump those kisses all over the place. So we're going to park our cutting blade at the bottom and we're going to line it up at that half inch mark. You can see it's lined up all the way down. And this is kind of a Goldilocks move, not too hard, not too soft. 
It has to be just right. You don't want to tear through your paper, but you also don't want to press so lightly that you can't tell where it is. Okay, so let's fold and finger burnish those. I don't always bring my bone folder out for everything. Now, I will do the cutting for that, but I want to get my base all cut and scored, but I want to explain how I did this so that you can do this on your own. So basically what I had to do, and I do have to give credit, there is a German demonstrator that I saw had a video, but of course I don't speak German and I don't use centimeters. So I had to reverse engineer this. So you take your lid, you figure out what you want to score it at, and like I said, I did half an inch. So then you need to measure across, like only where your score lines are. And for me, that was two and an eighth by three and a half. Okay, so I've got that written, two and an eighth by three and a half. Now, for this box, I have a one inch depth. So it fits kisses and probably a bunch of other stuff. But you have to determine what the height of your box is going to be. Height, depth, I don't know that there's a difference. So I decided I wanted one inch. So I need to add one inch on the left and one inch on the right, which gives us four and an eighth. Now I've got minus one sixteenth. That is a little trick I'm going to show you and it's actually not one sixteenth. So let me, let me erase those. Kind of a visual cue though to help me to remember my little trick. I think one of the best things you can do is learn how to make a box, not always case somebody, but if you have something that you want to make a box for. I don't see anything. Maybe you want to make a box for a cute little plant. Maybe, right? Then you need to know how to come up with that. Now, there are templates you can use, but basically you're going to take the width, um, the width, the height, and the length. Not necessarily in that order. Okay, so ours is two and an eighth by three and a half, and then we're determining that our depth is going to be one inch. So we've got four and an eighth, and then the three and a half is one inch on the left, one inch on the right. So that brings us to five and a half. So we've got four and an eighth by five and a half. And this right now is just a standard mat, so it's four and a quarter by five and a half. So I want to take this to four and an eighth, which is the second tick, and I want to, I basically want to take a 30 second off of this. So I'm going to go in between, what did I say four and an eighth? I'm going to go in between the one sixteenth mark. It would help if you could see, right? I end up completely off my desk when I'm trying to show this. Okay, so this is four inches, and then we've got four and one sixteenth, and then four and one eighth. Well, that would be two sixteenths, but with fractions, we know that it's going to be an eighth. So I want to go right in between those two. So basically a 32nd, I think. <laughs> and then for the length, I want to go five and a half, which this already is. And then I'm going to take that 32nd off. So you're basically just taking a little sliver. And when you're using the Stampin' Trimmer, it can be tricky to get just that little bit off. So I would start with a larger piece, but I mean, my mats are already cut. So if that happens, you can come back in with a guillotine trimmer or just buff off that little bit of fluff. This is all going to be tucked away in the box anyways. So it's not a big deal. Now, like I said, we're doing an inch on all four sides. So let's park that cutting blade again. And now let's do an inch. Sorry, my camera is trying to color correct. I don't want it to do that. Okay, now one little trick that I have, if you don't want to use your scissors to do your scoring, because right now we're gonna prep our tabs, you can use your paper trimmer. Now you do have to make sure that you don't come too far, you don't wanna cut into your box. So if in doubt, just back it up and keep going until you know 
that you're in the right spot or you can finish it with your scissors but just don't go too far and then of course we're lifting it up there otherwise I would have just cut off that whole tab okay we're not done with that but we are done with it for now so I do still need my scissors we can't get away from that and I'm just going to notch kind of cut a little bit too far over on that but it's okay so we're going to just slightly notch that and that helps to debulk the tab so that when we put this box together we don't have so much cardstock at the bottom there that it doesn't sit nice and you don't have to do your tabs like this you can do them coming out of the sides you can do it where you're coming around so you've got that one going that way that one going that way that way that way totally up to you there's no right or wrong okay so we're just going to burnish those finger burnish them a term I just I don't know if I invented it but it's the first time I've ever used it okay so we'll add some glue I like to do one tab at a time, especially when I'm starting. You want to make sure that you have a nice 90 degree corner there. Nothing will wreck a box faster than sloppy corners. Zoom back out so that you don't end up missing the whole thing. I'm standing up, which poses its challenges, but also zooming in, I tend to forget that I've done that and then I work out of the frame or I get too close to me and you can't see what I'm doing like all of these challenges and the reason I like to use liquid glue is for something like that you saw that that went in a little bit too far I had a few seconds of wiggle room to be able to write that okay so now we are going to do the same thing and I actually decided that I liked my tabs on the ends, sorry, just making sure I had it the right way. So to get them on the ends, what do you want to bet I'm going to do it the wrong way? You know what, I'm going to do it like this. We're going to do it at the ends like we did. Now you can see I'm mid scallop here. I'm just going to, gonna, I'm going to cut from the middle of that scallop to my notch, to my cut line, whatever that is. See, I'm just taking out what remains of that scallop. So do your, your little snip up and cut out that little triangle. Doesn't have to be perfect, but the more you make boxes, the more comfortable you will get. And see, we want that to go on the inside. We want to have a nice clean corner there. So we're just going to do that the way we did with the base. And again, just working with one corner at least to start. Once you get a little more comfortable, it's not so bad. There's glue coming through the little dots. <laughs> I'm so excited to be able to place an order and be able to get whatever. Pre-orders are always so interesting because there are items you see when the pre-order comes out. And if you wanna be able to pre-order, you can join my team. If you're in Canada, if you're not in Canada, then you could still join, just not under me. Um, anyways, I think we all end up getting items that we wouldn't have normally gotten as the pre-order goes along because you're like, oh, okay, I need something new. What am I going to get? And you only have so many options. And I think there are a couple bundles that were in the pre-order that are like, okay, I'll get it because it's the only thing that I can get that I don't already have. So... I know I do that. I'm sure there's other demonstrators, actually. I know there's other demonstrators that do Okay, that. so that's good enough. Now, there's always that moment of truth when you go to find out if your box fits. And I think this one's going to be a tight one. But it's always a little bit scary. So if you are worried, you don't have to wait until you get your box assembled. And I will show you what I mean on the next one. But how stinking cute is that? I may go in and cut that after, but so cute, right? And I think it would also be super cute if it didn't have glue peeking out. If you cut a window into there so you could see what was in there, but then you couldn't dress it up with the tags the way I did. But I think that would be really cute. Okay, so that is the first one. 
Not so bad, right? It took me longer to get all my announcements out. So now this one, I want to show you what I mean because it may not make sense. But let me start. I've got this piece of the hand penned DSP and I'm using that largest scalloped border. And I want to mention that these little bits, like the, the die cut itself comes out really easily, but you end up with all of these little bits stuck in there. And I mean, I don't know about you, but I don't want to sit there with my take your pick tool and sit and bang those things out. So I used to do this over my garbage, but I'm not finding that it works very well. So if you get any that are being stubborn and still staying in there, just take a pencil or your take your pick tool, even better, and poke them out. And I want to show you, this is not a Stampin' Up! product, but one of my so sweet customers sent me this thing and I use it every time I craft. I can't get enough of it. You might have seen it or you might own one yourself. It's a little Starfrit tabletop vacuum. This says diadem, but or diadem. I don't know what it is, uh, but love it. It's quiet. It's perfect. So it, even when hubby's sleeping, I can still use it, which he is. And then you can see it all gets trapped in there. I mean, I flipped it a little too quickly, but love this thing. So I will put a link below to the Amazon listing for this. Look, I'm even getting dog fur in there. Like, If you are a Friends fan, Friends fan like I am, uh, you might remember that there was one episode where Monica was cleaning her vacuum, like her, her stand-up vacuum, with her dust buster. She's like, I just wish there were one for this. This is the one for that. It's awesome. If you don't have one in your life, you need one. You don't even know that you're missing it, but you need one. Okay, so that is all the die cutting for now. We are going to die cut some tags at the end, but let me go ahead and show you this. So now we've got this lid, and for this one, I decided I wanted it to be a, quite a bit taller. So we've gone an inch and a half on this one instead of an inch. And let's go ahead and do this. I scored this one at, I'm sorry, I, I can't retain everything. I scored this one at an inch. So let's do that quickly and then I can show you how to measure that. Remembering to take that one thirty second off. I don't want to go over that line to the right. Okay, so let's do our finger burnish here. And what I am going to do, which way do I want this to go? Uh, it's been a long day. I don't know that I can figure this part out. So I'm just going to go ahead and do it. I'm going to do it at the ends like we did on the other one. So again, we'll take that notch out. So always start with your straight line and then notch it out. Not so good with the scissors tonight. And you're always doing that miter to the inside of the cut. Okay, so now let's fold all this down. Pretend those tabs aren't there. Let's fold everything in. So the dimensions that I need is this. This is what I need because that's going to be the top of our box. So this is, uh, what was it? It's one and seven eighths. One and seven eighths. Pretty darn close. And then it is three and a quarter. So now what we need to do 
so nasally, which is not going to help the microphone sound on here. So one and a half on either side of that one and seven eighths. So the easiest way to do that is just say plus three instead of trying to add halves and halves and seven eighths. So we now have four and seven eighths. For the width, we had three and a quarter plus the three, which is a inch and a half on either side, which gives us six and a quarter. So we have four and seven eighths by six and a quarter. And I have already cut that one down. And now what we need to do is score it an inch and a half. Now, usually I prefer to do my scoring to the right of the blade, but because our one and a half ends like right there, I don't want to take the chance. So I am going to work to the left of my blade, which feels completely foreign to me. So one and a half on all four sides. Oh, yes, I took that uh, one thirty second off. I'm like, wait a minute, hold the press. Whoa. See, I don't have as good a grip on that side. Now, again, we're going to do our cutting with the trimmer because why not? This is also an inch and a half cut and my scissors aren't very long. Oh, I will also link to these. I get so many questions about where I got these scissors. And well, I got them from Wish before they started uh, scamming everything Stampin' Up. We have a lawsuit against them. I mean, Stampin' Up, not me. But uh, before that was a thing, I got these. So I do have a link to them on Amazon. And it is an affiliate link, so if you choose to purchase anything from my list of links, I do get a small commission. At least I am hoping because uh, I actually just set it up. I'd had it set up sometime last year and I only put one product in there and it was a big ticket item. And after I didn't get any sales or anything, I decided, well, that was dumb. Why didn't I put more things in there? There's things I use from Amazon all the time. Like maybe you want to know where I get my shipping labels from and maybe you want to know where I get bags for my retreat from and my scissors and the adorable little ladybug. Like maybe. So that's my story. Okay, so we are adding our glue. And again, you want to get that nice 90 degree beautiful corner. Oh, sniffly. It's not COVID. Okay, take that out, glue that down, take that out. I don't know where my mind went there. Okay, so again, another nice corner. And actually, I do want to push that in because I don't want to have to figure that out after. So let's just do both of them at the same time. When it's the final tabs, I find it's easier to do both you don't want to have to like bend your box all out of shape to get that last tab in there. But part of the reason I use the liquid glue, and I showed you that on the first box, is that it gives you that little bit of wiggle room. If I had been using tear and tape there, I would have been hooped. I would have had to take that apart and figure it out. Now, if you get a little bit of glue seeping out, just use an adhesive eraser. I get mine at the Dollar Tree, and one will last you a long, long time. Okay, so remember I was talking about if you don't want to put your box together to make sure that your lid fits. Well, I've already put it together, but what you can do is just lay it on your template or your lid and make sure that the two are going to play nice together. But I told you it was a long day. <sighs> My brain's like, that's it. No more thinking. We're done. I am going to cut this one tab the little scallop that's hanging over because chances are that's going to get caught on something and it's going to tear. But remember I said that I did try trimming off scallops on the first box and I ended up with spots that didn't have any scallops so I'm just going to take that little piece off there. These are the ends new and you're going to notice. 
And I always say that if you give a gift to someone and they criticize some part of it, probably the last time they're going to give a little handmade something, right? These are handmade, not Hallmark. Recipients need to appreciate the fact that someone took time out of their day to make them something. And you see, I'm not going as far as the next scallop. I'm just taking that little bit that hangs off and this side's gonna be easier from the inside. But just that little piece that could get stuck on something else. And if you were really worried, you could glue it down. But look at this. This is like a glove because of that little one thirty second that we did. If we went as far as a 16th, it wouldn't be this snug. The first boxes I had had a whole bunch of play. These ones are very snug and look quite professional, don't they? I mean, not the second because they don't have any tags or anything, but I think what I'm going to do is we will use pale papaya for this one because it's definitely monochrome. And you could definitely put some ribbon on here. Just know that when you put your tag on, you're not going to be able to get that ribbon off unless you put it under dimensional. So I think we're just going to keep it simple here. And I use Misty Moonlight. I'm wondering, maybe we should use Misty Moonlight just to keep it consistent. So we'll use Misty Moonlight for that. And pale Papaya for this. I love this pale papaya. To do the masking, I like to just use a little mini post-it note, stick it to my block at the top and the bottom. And this is going to sound ridiculous, but the most important part of masking is remembering to take the mask off at the end. I don't know about you, but I've done it. I think every crafter has done it. Where you mask something and then you stamp it with the mask still on and wonder why you have ink everywhere. <laughs> Now, if we didn't have the for now on there, we could just ink it at the end, but let's put for you. That's probably not gonna be straight. My hand kind of shook at the last second, but look, how sweet is that? For you, and you know I'm a sucker for a mixed font. I mean, if this is your first time here, you don't know that, but you know it now. I love me a good mixed font. Give me a sans serif with like a hand printing or scripty and oh. Okay, so I am going to do both of these so that they are right justified. So that if we're putting a flower, we've got a little bit of room on the side. You know, I'm thinking because I really felt like this needed some ribbon. So maybe instead of doing flowers like I did with the samples, let's use an itty bitty piece of ribbon. Now, when I go to look at my ribbon, I always have to cover my light because there's like LED lights looking at me and I'm trying, I'm like, what color ribbon is that? <laughs> okay, so this is Misty Moonlight and at the time I'm recording this, this hasn't retired yet. Uh, what was I thinking? It's gonna be way too short. Now this is going to be way too long, but like as of midnight tonight, this is retired. So it will be going in my Bogo sale. Speaking of which, if you would, if you're in Canada and you would like an invitation to my Bogo sale, I am participating in a group Bogo sale again this time. I love it. The organizer is my uplines, uplines, uplines. So like my great grandma, it's the easiest way to say it. And she does so much work for this that I'm like, ah, oh, how can you go wrong? Okay, so just decide which side you like better. I've got a twist in there that wasn't working. So just let me know and I can get you an invite to the group. It starts this Friday, May 7th and goes till uh, the following Wednesday, I believe, at this point. So... Wednesday, May 12th. And if you're unfamiliar with BOGO, it is, you choose, do you see all of those stamps up there? All the ones in the middle? All the ones on the bottom are retiring. I'm losing a lot of stamps. So all of these are retiring. 
and my team gets first kick of the can, which is what that upper corner is. And all of those on the bottom will be going into the BOGO sale. So you choose what you want from my retiring product. And then you go into the new catalog. I don't know if I like it like that. You go into the new catalog and you choose new product for that value. So let's say you chose $56 in my BOGO sale. So you would go into the catalog. You're looking for something that's at least $56 or over. It has to be 56 or over before taxes and shipping. This may have to be sideways because it is a large bow and I don't want to cover that much of that. I think I'm going to do it that way. So if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. It is only available in Canada. Okay, so pop that on there. I know it looks funny sideways, but let's see if we can do a smaller bow with the pale papaya. Sorry for the squinting. <laughs> And this is a beautiful 3 8 inch sheer ribbon. All five of the in colors have this same sheer ribbon. And I've got all five colors. But like I was saying at the beginning, if you want to build your collection of in colors and you can wait the five months to do it on a budget, you will get one, you'll get everything in the in colors in one month at a time. That did not come out right. So each month you will get one color. So let's say that we already said that May was fresh freesia. So let's say that your June, because it's in color club needs five members so that each month a member gets a new color. So let's say in June, your color is pale papaya. You're going to get everything that we mentioned in pale papaya. And then it just goes on until the end of the five month period. And then you've got all the colors, a little bit of everything. There are free gifts, there's tutorials, there's gonna be prizes, but I have to be able to fill a share. Right now, I don't have a full share. So message me if you have any questions. And if you have already gone and bought all of the in colors because you're a demonstrator and you just couldn't wait, then we could work on different colors. Maybe you don't have all of the Stampin' Up! colors yet and you need to get, say, Grey Granite one month and Pear Pizzazz one month, and we can do something like that. Okay. This, oh, this one will fit the right way. Not that that's wrong, but it looks funny, doesn't it? Okay, so I'm going to make this outro very short. We've got our two smaller boxes. We've got our two taller boxes. Let me know in the comments below which one you like better, if you like the pansies or the hand penned. They're both gorgeous, aren't they? And I will try to remember to put the dimensions in the description below. I will link all supplies, although the supplies may not be in the software that I use just yet. I know that uh, some of the tutorials I've had to type so far, they aren't all in there. So I will update as soon as I can. If you have any questions about any of the promotions going on, if you want to join In Color Club, product shares, I will have more product shares to come. I have one that is closed, uh, but anytime I get four people, I can open up a new one. So uh, any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. I am so happy that you spent some time with me today and please consider hitting that subscribe button. You'll catch a new video each and every week, usually on Mondays, but lately life has been so crazy. I just finished spring fling, which was a full weekend retreat. And oh my gosh, my cup runneth over. I, it was such an amazing weekend with amazing demonstrator friends, amazing crafters, and ah, just refreshed. So that, that and the fact that my video last night didn't work are the reasons that this one's coming to you a little late, but better late than never, right? I'm only human. So I hope to see you again next week. We'll see you soon, my crafty friends. Bye.